we're going to move on to our next speaker here. And um, Dr. Holishek uh, is known, I think, for most of you here in the European uh, region. He has been for many, many years serving God in the area of medical missionary work. He's a physician, a medical doctor with an MPH and with a PhD. He has had postgraduate studies in the area of natural remedies, uh, and that actually gives him a lot of insight into the message that he's going to be sharing just now with us. As you know, he has been the Euro Africa Division Health Minister Director for many years as well, the, a professor and director of the a school, our university in Montemorelos in Mexico, and has held many other um, wonderful leadership role uh, positions inspiring people, young and old. I was actually very uh, touched by him. The first time I connected with Dr. Halishek was when I had recently been appointed to be a health minister director for the division, and I got an email in Portuguese. He speaks several languages, by the way. And he was sharing with me some very important documents that I should know about, historic documents of the church in relationship to health and health care. And uh, I could see right from them of the passion he has for God. So let us give a warm welcome to him as, as he shared with us this morning uh, the message of how we can know and learn about alternative healing methods and discern which ones are sound and which ones are not. So a warm welcome to you, Dr. Halishek. Thank you. Good morning to all of you, brethren, sisters, and for those who are watching online. Alternative healing methods. Separating gold from dross. We received a lot of gold already in this conference. Let's take this home. That's what we came for. Now there is a battle even in medicine. There are different people with positions saying Western medicine is scientific, therefore it's good. Oriental medicine is mystical, therefore it's bad. Western medicine treats only the symptoms, therefore it's bad. Oriental medicine is holistic, treats the whole body, mind and spirit, therefore it's good. It's just a contradiction. So, allopathy uses chemicals, that's bad. Alternative medicine is natural, therefore it's good. Who is right? Is there another option? Are there different options? That's what we will look into today. In fact, as you have noticed already, we are in a battle between Christ and Satan. And what is the role of medicine in this battle, in this last battle? First of all, we have to know what is disease at all. Where does it come from? What's the origin? The first sin to the first sinner, disease and death entered into the world to everybody. You know the symbol of medicine, the rod of Asclepius. Asclepius was the god of medicine. It's a Greek tradition. But physicians use this symbol today. Well, the serpent, serpent was very smart. The smartest of the animals. Maybe that's the reason? We don't know. One thing people don't know usually is that there was an experience in the desert Israelites were coming out to Canaan. They were bitten by deadly serpents. And what was the order given to Moses? Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. Jesus 
took that as a prophecy for himself. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. You see, medicine is part of the plan of salvation. It's not together with the plan, it's part of it. Like two sides of one coin. And that's important. As we find different philosophies and different religions, each one with their own method of salvation, we find the same thing in medicine. We need to learn a few concepts, expressions, conventional medicine, allopathy, Western versus Oriental, alternative, complementary, holistic, integral, energy, force, dynamic, and so on. All these expressions are very, very common. Only one expression is missing in the literature, and we find it only in the Bible and in the writings of the spirit of prophecy. Natural laws. There are laws, physiological laws, mental laws, moral laws, physi uh, physical, chemical laws. The whole universe works perfectly according to those laws. And that is important. Ellen White and the Bible, both, they stress this over and over and over. Here is a picture from a typical pharmacy in Germany. You see, hopefully you can read on the left side, it says allopathy, no, yes, and on the right side, homeopathy. So you have there the conventional and the alternative together. That is, in days before, they were alternatives, either this or that. Today it's complementary, this and that. A mixture of truth and error, a mixture of gold and dross. True science. In true science there can be nothing contrary to the teaching of the Word of God. For both have the same author. A correct understanding of both will always prove them to be in harmony. Truth, whether in nature or in revelation, is harmonious with itself in all its manifestations. Whatsoever in so-called scientific teaching contradicts the testimony of God's word is mere human guesswork. That's important. Now, I put side to side some basic concepts, biblical concepts on the left side, and New Age pantheism on the right side. There is a concept for each one concerning God, Jesus, Bible, angels, origin of sin, and so on. But three of those concepts are basic for our understanding today. On one side, we as Christians believe in God as a creator, a person. Disease is the result of breaking those laws of God. All of them. Natural, moral, whatsoever. God's laws. And restoration to life is possible only through Christ. On the other side, the power that is needed to restore health is believed to be energy. Even some say an intelligent energy. How can in energy be intelligent? <laughs> there must be an intelligent mind behind it. Disease is often regarded as being a disturbance of energy flow. And there are many, many healing methods based on that. And life would be obtained, restoring the harmony with this energy, with the flow of energy, with the universe. Keep those two things in mind. The energy concept is basic to many, many alternative methods. It's true. 
When Jesus called the twelve together, he gave them what? Power and authority. We cannot heal ourselves. We need external power. The Savior in his miracles revealed the power that is continually at work in man's behalf to sustain and to heal him. When any part of the body sustains injury, a healing process begins. But the power working through these agencies is the power of God, not any energy in nature. All life-giving power is from him. When one recovers from disease, it is God who restores him. This energy concept is the parallel to the Christian concept. We believe in power of God, Holy Spirit. They believe in power, energy, somewhere in nature. The apostles of nearly all forms of spiritism claim to have the power to cure the disease. We find that any religion, I would say every religion or philosophy, has something for the spirit to save the soul and a method to heal the body. They are part of it, like we have. Now we are learning our part, how we see healing, the healing art. Mm -hmm. They attribute their power to electricity, magnetism, so-called sympathetic remedies, or to latent forces within the mind of man. And there are not few, even in this Christian age, trusting in the power of the living, Go, who go to these healers instead of trusting in the power of the living God and the skill of well-qualified Christian physicians. Many methods exist and are continually appearing to correct this energy flow to promote health, to restore health. This afternoon we will go into more details even electro-diagnostic devices have been developed. They say, computer doesn't lie. No? And I give you here the example of the scale for body fat percentage. We step on a scale, barefoot, a tiny electrical current is sent, the resistance of the body is measured on the other side, and according to our gender, weight, and height, and the conductivity of the fat and the muscles and the blood, a little computer calculates the approximate percentage of fat in our body. We do that all the time in the health expos. Now, this device, called Diaz Vet, <laughs> does the same thing, but it's connected to a computer. And what is the result? There comes a table showing so much percentage of disease of the right kidney, of the left kidney, of the liver, of the spleen, of the stomach, of the right tonsil, of the left tonsil, of the heart. Is that possible? No way, my, no way. That goes totally against our the known physical laws. And there are many methods. Hmm? Electroacupuncture, bioelectric functions, bioresonance, mora, radiesthesia, and so on, and so on. Continually are appearing new methods. What we need to know, if they are based on this concept, if they are against the physical laws, scientific laws, there is no truth in them. It's dross. Now, what is a reflex? We know what a neurological reflex is. Everybody knows that. Hmm? You hit with a hammer and the knee jumps. You touch something, the muscle pulls back. Now, reflexology has nothing to do with that. Reflexology means that a part reflects like a mirror the organ corresponding to that part. 
and there are maps, designs on the hands, on the sole of the foot, on the ear, on the tongue, on the nose, wherever the fantasy of the human mind finds some analogy. It has nothing to do with a, with a neurological reflex. It's based on the belief that there are reflexes in the feet, hands, ears, which correspond to every part. Reflexology claims to manipulate energy, key. However, there is no scientific evidence for the existence of life energy, key, energy balance, and so on. Here you see a map of the iris in the eye. Each part should correspond to an organ. Even those do not coincide from one book to the other. There is nothing really scientific in them. Applied kinesiology, very common today in Europe, meaning that strength of the muscle has to do with some allergy or, or so on. Our teacher in natural medicine even put some bottles hmm, of glass in the hand of the patient with some substance in it, margarine or wheat or something else, and then test his muscles says, oh, you are allergic for that, you are allergic for that. Hmm? That happens. And people believe in it. Believe in it. Homeopathy. This quotation comes from Dr. Benno Hecht, a Swiss specialist in homeopathy. And he wrote this in the Swiss Christian Social Health Insurance Journal. What is homeopathy? He is promoting homeopathy. He practices it. He says, shaking and rubbing, that means potentiating the substances according to the typical preparation of homeopathic remedies, liberates energies, energies that are not present in simply diluted med medications. The chemical material substance acts upon the chemical material part of the person, the body. The non-chemical Non-material substance acts upon the non-material parts of the body, his soul, the force that guides the body. Is that religion? Trying to heal the soul? Can we go to the pharmacy to heal our soul? It would be wonderful, easy, but the poor wouldn't be able to afford it. Our salvation is free. We don't buy it in the pharmacy. Well, Ellen White and homeopathy. Homeopathy is not an issue in Ellen White writings. She never promoted it. It's not part of the New Start program. It's not part of what we believe and teach. But there was an issue. Two physicians, Adventist physicians, in one of the first clinics, one used a lot of medications, very poisonous at that time, others did, others did not, and they had a fight. And there was another lady that came. Ellen White writes the following, in their practice, the physicians should seek more and more to lessen the use of drugs instead of increasing it. When Dr. A came to health retreat, she laid aside her knowledge and practice of hygiene and administered the little homeopathic doses for almost every ailment. This was against the light God had given. Thus our people who had been taught to avoid drugs in almost every form were receiving a different education. I was obliged to tell her that this practice of depending upon medicine, whether in large or small doses, was not in accordance with the principles of health reform. When Loma Linda was established, Ellen White lived. She gave many counsels 
And the, she says, the light given me is, we must provide that what is essential to qualify our youth who desire to be physicians, so that they may intelligently fit themselves to be able to stand the examinations essential to prove their efficiency as physicians. But it works. That's what people say. It works. My question is, what works? So I want to give some explanations. First of all, about 80% of all functional disturbances go better without or with any treatment. God built us in a wonderful way to recover our health. Alternative treatments are often combined with fasting, rest, healthy diet, hydrotherapy, positive thinking, which themselves promote healing. Often the results can be attributed to a simple placebo effect. Chance. Wrong diagnosis, false cure, I have seen a lot of this. And the last one, supernatural healing. Yesterday was raised a question, why should we have sanitariums? Why should we not, like Christ, pray for the sick that they may be healed miraculously? I hope the person is here in the auditorium to listen to the answer. I have answered, says Ellen White. Suppose we were able to do this in all cases, how many would appreciate the healing? Would those who were healed become health reformers or continue to be health destroyers? Jesus is the greatest healer, but he desires that by living in conformity with his laws, we may cooperate with him in the recovery and maintenance of health. Combined with the work of healing, there must be an importing, imparting of the knowledge on how to resist temptations. Those who come to our sanitarium should be aroused to a sense of their own responsibility to work in harmony with God of the truth. Now, we come to our time when the Holy Spirit will be poured out the latter rain. Servants of God with their faces lightened up, shining with holy consecration, will hasten from place to place to proclaim the message from heaven. And what will heaven happen? Miracles will be wrought. The sick will be healed. Signs and wonders will follow the believers. For that person who asked the question yesterday, there is this answer. There is a time to heal with correction of the habits of life. And at the end, when the time is short, when the Holy Spirit is poured out, there will be miracles. But also Satan works with lying wonders, even bringing down fire from heaven in the sight of man. He also will heal with miracles. We have now to confront those two. How will we find out? We have to be firm on the Bible, firm on the spirit of prophecy, because it's not easy sometimes to see what is what. Okay. In some cases, When allowed to be treated by therapists from Christian science, oriental religions, healing cults, Christians place themselves in Satan's hand. It's dangerous. It is dangerous. Those who give themselves up to the sorcery of Satan may boast of great benefit received, but does this prove their course to be wise or safe? What will happen? if we do that and lose our soul? This document you cannot read. 
It's too small. It's a document prepared by the General Conference Health Department. And now let's see it a little bit closer. What was recommended? Now you can read it. That Adventists neither practice nor use nor promote any kind of procedures, the philosophic and ideologic basis of which are in opposition of the principles of the Christian revelation and which are not consistent with known scientific laws. The latest statement, which we read in the General Conference Working Policy, practices without a firm evidence based and not based on the Bible or the spirit of prophecy, including, though not limited to, aromatherapy, cranial sacral therapy, homeopathy, hypnotherapy, iridology, magnets, methods aligning forces of energy, pendulum diagnostics, untested herbal remedies, reflexology, repetitive colonic irrigation, therapeutic touch, urine therapy should be discouraged. That book, GC Working Policy, is in every office of every division, union, conference. Health practitioners, Adventists, should have access to it, should know this. You will receive a document I will mail to you, where you have these statements. Let's go ahead. Ellen White says, the Lord gave me special light that we need to work in different lines from dosing existing in any institution of the world. The General Conference has this program, celebrations. You can read about it based on our concepts. Those are the true natural remedies. In, here in our division, we prefer New Start Plus, which will be copyrighted. It's in the process. In German, sehr wertvoll. The same concepts. So we added those four letters to the New Start to be parallel to celebrations. New Start Plus is fully scientific, natural, holistic, harmonizes with the Bible, and inexpensive. What would be healing? What would be the ideal healing method? Imagine a place like this, where modern medicine meets nature's remedies in a Christian setting. We Adventists need to multiply these settings. I'm showing mainly those from Europe, because we are in Europe. What we need is to point to Christ as our physician. He is the one who heals. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 This is such an important topic, isn't it? Thank you, Dr. Holischek, for reminding us. I don't know about you here in Europe, but I imagine that you face the same issues we face in the United States with this. Oftentimes, I come to churches or I talk to health leaders where, without knowing this, they end up bringing and inviting um, this kind of message that can really obstruct the work that God is trying to do. So it's wonderful, and uh, we really appreciate this, this reminder of the importance that we need to be aware of how to prevent this from entering, how to prevent Satan from really disturbing and bringing confusion in the truth that God wants us to use.